Let's get to YouTube and welcome to the house. I'm gonna say you're gonna sense a little bit of a theme to today's market watch because I went looking around the market to spend my own money for the first time in a very long time. But I'm not returning to vending. What I'm actually looking at doing is keeping all of these cards for five years. And I'm not gonna feature a single card that I bought today. Instead, I'm gonna show things that I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. And I'll do a mass opening on everything that I bought in one single video and explain why I'm looking for for a long rate of return in terms of value on these cards, what gambles that I did take, and you know I love penny stocks. I think the biggest card I bought was $30, and most of them are $10 to $5 or less, and you'll see that in the data too. That being said, also thanks for using my TCG player link in the description down below, costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly, and for that, I want to continue to do giveaways. I keep poking and nudging TCG player to maybe do something like a bonus bucks back day for the creator links where it's just like five percent like what's good five but it's really hard for them to move things on their back end and i know that it's only one or two people that end up winning these giveaways every month but i want to do something back for all the support that i'm seeing seriously it's like pretty much as good as my ad revenue because ad revenue is so bad right now so all you got to do to enter this giveaway is like this video be a subscriber because I'm not going to give it to someone who isn't supporting at least for free and have those settings on your subscriptions public. And then I want to hear one card that you think is a sleeper investment on the market. Something that people aren't looking enough at and that you think has very high potential. And then we can actually look through those comments and have a pretty good discussion on that as well. And tell me if you think it's a short term or long term investment also. That being said, the giveaway is for this lovely YCS Japan playmat that has Dark Magician Girl, Yugi with the circle behind them. We actually have that on a mat in the TCG and then Dark Magician. We do not have the Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl's arts. I think this is a freaking awesome playmat, and I know some people could use a huge win during times like these. So, yeah, I'm going to be giving that away, but only to one person. I'll pin the comment in two days. That being said, let's get into today's market watch, starting with Borolode Savage Dragon. This card can't stop going up despite everything, so I'm going to reiterate, look freaking ahead battles of legend armageddon did reprint boral sword and you also have savage strike guaranteed in this year's megatons you really think this is going to dodge both if i was putting my money into part of the needle fiber combos that also has upward potential with dragma it's for something like herald of arc light that is also played on all these end boards for all these combos i think it's actually absurd that herald is sitting here like this compared to boral load savage dragon if i was still into vending today this would be one of the ultimate penny stonks that just has meta relevance written all over it and yeah maybe you could see a secret rare in this year's battles of legend or maybe next i don't think they'll be back on it this year or maybe something like dual devastator since it is a generic synchro but i just don't see its reprint coming and we don't have that second dual devastator announced that may be something konami does every three years so i think this is terrible money spent it keeps going to ridiculous proportions and i would stay completely away from this if you're not playing in physical events and we don't even have regionals or ycs's or bigger level events announced i get physical Yu-Gi-Oh feels better with the actual cards but stay away for now it would be 500 big brain iq to put savage strike in the mega tens and this somehow missed now like i said there's gonna be a theme to today's market watch i went after ultimate rares but i went after trash ultimate rares that are first edition but ones that specifically had to do with card lore or had semi-decent effects or were from sets where i noticed other cards are really skyrocketing in the range of first ed ultimate rares yet these are staying behind that's personally where i put my money i did not buy anything out but i did spend a very large chunk of change on a lot of different cards some ranging in like i said the five to ten dollar range for a lot of them but also in the two dollar three dollar range where i thought there were a lot of sleepers so here are some of the ones that i found interesting along the way but i stayed away from 
Lightning Chidori is often associated with the Harpy decks, and Harpies are getting a lot of buzz when it comes to the Lost Arts and also the Synchro coming along. And I think two level four Wind Monsters is not the worst restriction in the world, although it takes a lot of love to go ahead and get this guy out. We see he's towards $17 for Unlimiteds, and if we're looking for a first edition, I... I think they're a bit higher if we can actually get this to load. I know my internet sometimes struggles a little while I have XSplit open, so we'll let that happen. Our Turgis Ultimate Rare got completely bought out with the Flame Noble Knights coming around the horizon. Uh, I do think they'll end up using this guy. He's a really, really good Xyz to end up going into, and I do think this was a pretty smart one. I think in terms of long-term value, he's probably going to stay above $12. Let's... Nope, nope, no first dead. All right, thanks, TC player. Safira, Queen of the Dragons from Duelist Alliance, always got a lot of love. People really enjoyed making decks around her and trying to make her be good. It's one of those cards like from back in the day. I really want a Tyrant Dragon or Horus Level 8 to be really good. And we see her unlimbs are actually towards $10 and the first edition is not too far behind. So when something's starting to bump up, yet first eds are still around, I would think the first eds are something you should grab sooner than later before they disappear and you're playing a long term waiting game skyscraper has hit the freaking stratosphere those buildings are tall and wow are they very expensive they are towards basically sold out they're they're non-existent on market where they're 50 for the the near mint unlimiteds if you're hunting karma cut is very big brain i think i brought this up on a market watch but i may have forgot to because when it does actually remove the monster it gets rid of all other copies in the graveyard so against eldlich this is kind of 500 iq you end up getting rid of every single golden lord so this is back towards its prices from when Burning Abyss was meta, but I also heavily like that it goes in with card lore. Having, you know, Warrior Lady of the Wasteland getting dragged into the different dimension, we know she's going to become DD Warrior Lady. I like this long term because of something like that that I think is underestimated when it comes to people looking at the market. And finally, some things loaded. Yeah, $60 for first set actually, and then 70 And you can't even find the Unlimiteds right now. Let's see if the uh, other versions of some of these loaded. Chidori, first edition edition yeah twenty dollars it's not too far from its unlimiteds actually but i really liked karma cut as uh, an investment and that's one that i didn't get to do because it's gone up so much versus where i would have been buying them allure of darkness is a big boy investment but i think it's weird to say that the first editions may actually be undervalued towards 160 and it's weird to say that because I'm looking at the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! history, cards that people really want to go after, and draw cards are king when it comes to long-term investments, and actually the $160 ones are gone. Uh, so we see $180, and I think these could be $250 for truly mint ones, because so many of these got banged up during Dark Arm format. So many of these ended up played and i think you could see these being 250 dollars realistically years down the road not any time immediate not like oh my gosh it's a suddenly something i gotta grab but i think years from now you'll look back and be like ah, i should have picked those up if you're really building max out max rarity teledad like so many people claim they are intercept wave is a funny one i almost went in but i stay away from this meme it turns everybody to defense and then it'll bounce them in the end phase so it's like kind of uh, uh, against the synchro boards it doesn't even have to turn it to defense it just bounces all synchros it's kind of like a weird evenly matched if i was to compare it but it's only gonna it's only gonna do stuff to the synchros this has got hyped in multiple formats don't really fall for this one in my opinion but it is a funny one and it is a great looking ultimate rare towards the four to five dollar mark but i i just it's one that i couldn't bring myself to touch i just ah what a meme invocation ultimate rares have actually fallen back down towards the uh, 95 dollar mark i had somebody ask me john why can't i sell my secret rare invocations 
That's because the European print taco bends. When I say taco bends, it means it curves up and foils into a way that would be marked in your deck. That's why people almost prefer the super rares, and that's almost matched it in price, despite this being a higher mid rarity. But the ultimate rares are almost back towards 90 because this has largely been taken away from the metagame where it's being dominated by Adam Emancipator, as well as, I want to say, Eldritch and the other decks. This is just not appearing in online top cuts as much. Not as many people are leaning on it, but I still think the Invoked Engine is great. It mixes with Eldritch, by the way, very seamlessly, and I think people... They, they're starting to sleep on this a little too hard. It's towards 94 to 95 for the ulti already. It was bought out at the 90 point before. So those complaining that they would have bought it at $90, it's back in your buying range. And the final card I wanted to feature is also out of Savage Strike. Cyber's Quantum Dragon is a funny one. It's towards 8 to $9. I just, just suggest selling gears sooner than later with how Savage Strike is headed towards the Megatons, and this is one of the only cards of value. I don't think it'll be missed. I think this will receive its reprint, and you want to be careful about having cards that are up on the chopping block or buying those kinds of cards. It really is a dash, and I get, again, you, you might not want to play Crystal Wing. You might not... You know, want to wait for the cards, but gosh dang, $83 is going to fall towards $20 because it's likely any printing of this afterwards is going to be a matching or higher rarity. And, uh, I mean, yeah, the the Battles of Legend Boral Sword is doing pretty decent because Boral Sword's going up over time. You don't think Konami's going to cash in on this card again, too? Just keep those kinds of things in mind. So again, what I'm looking for with my long-term investing, if you haven't already guessed, the theme was kind of ultimate rares, like I had said, I'm looking at things that I think will double to 5X in price over the next five years. First edition stamps matter a lot when it comes to these things, and we just saw Korea reprint all of their old sets, and we've seen that slot appear on market in the EU for US sets, or, and the English sets before, I should say. So it is something scary that Konami could do at any time. They've run LOB to IOC into the ground with those legendary boards. That's why those unlimited cards are worth so little. Imagine if it does happen with things that have ultimate rares. That's why a lot of the cards I went after are first ed, or they're so cheap for the ultimate rare that I just couldn't personally resist. That being said, thanks for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and like this video if you want to enter that giveaway, and tell me down below again one card that you think is slept on as an investment on the market. Like, Allure of Darkness is hype beast, but this is something if I was playing with big boy cards that I personally would think long term would be actually pretty great.